Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Morning, it is Thursday, June 18th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. And all happy almost Father's Day. And all week we've been dropping not so subtle hints to remember dear old dad. That's right, especially Mike Osterhage. He does in the morning, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, we come across a survey because we love surveys on this newscast. What not to buy dad on Father's Day, according to a new survey by a company called Coupon Lawn. All right, and guess what's at the top of the list? Uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. The top unwanted gifts was clothing with 32.6% of the surveyed dads saying they were not big fans of the idea. The survey found that 46% of people buy clothes as Father's Day gifts. Uh, it goes on to say that dads don't like getting cards. Yeah, uh, responses found that 30% of fathers dislike receiving cards, even though 59% of people who get gifts on Father's Day buy cards. Also on the list right there, books and CDs, 30%, and personal care items ranking at 28.6%. Tools or appliances, 15.6%, electronics, 13.9%, and special outings, 12.5%. We're at the bottom of the survey, so those might be smart items to purchase after all. But important to keep in mind, this is generalizing, so it all depends on the father figure in your life to come down to see what he would really like. The study ends with Coupon Lawn said as part of its survey that 5.3 billion is spent on unwanted Father's Day gifts, but that's half of the 10.5 billion the site said is spent on unwanted Mother's Day ah. gifts. Well, so it's and the thought that counts. It is a thought. <laughs> and I did buy my dad something that's on this list of unwanted <laughs> items. Yes, I know. But you we're did. not going to say what it is because he might be streaming right now in Court, North right. Carolina. So I'm not going to tell you what I sent you. But dad. that's okay. But I think you'll like it anyway. I think you will too. <laughs> Let's take a look at the rundown. Prosecutors in Atlanta have announced that two officers are being charged in connection with the death of Rayshard Brooks. Meanwhile, other Atlanta police officers are now calling out sick in protest. <laughs> Former National Security Advisor John Bolton. His explosive new book portrays President Trump as incompetent and dangerous. And overnight, the Justice Department taking a new step. It's now filed for a temporary restraining order in hopes of stopping the book from being released. COVID cases are growing in at least 20 states and Puerto Rico. Nurses are flying in from other states to help with the surge. Bear County hospital leaders say they're better prepared to face a second wave of infections. Since the first wave was manageable, they say they were able to keep up. Target is raising its minimum wage to $15 an hour. It's up from $13, and it's more than double the federal minimum wage. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf issued the order mandating businesses put forth a new health and safety policy within five days. That policy must require all visitors and employees to wear a face covering. The commissioner of Major League Baseball says he's reached an understanding with the head of the Players Union for a 60 game season that would start next month, followed by expanded playoffs. Actress Kristen Stewart is poised to play Princess Diana in a new film. The movie called Spencer covers a weekend in the early 90s when Diana questions her marriage. For Delta, you will not be able to order alcohol if you're flying stateside. American Airlines will not be offering alcohol for most passengers either, but they will still be serving to first class passengers and on international flights. It's a new way to keep your social distance. Double-decker seating. The inventor says his lie flat seats won't take up any more room than the current seats, and they give people more privacy and comfort. See, we see artist renderings of different seat options, and the airlines never, ever go for it, you know? No, no one. And in, in the story, it said that no one has responded. None of the no. airlines have responded and say, hey, we'll do that. And, and I know air travel has changed probably for the foreseeable future, so I don't see them cramming more people in at this point, like like that double-decker setup. Uh, probably not. Probably not. Let's go outside with live cam for fans of Katie Blake. We've made yeah. some phone calls, and guess what? <laughs> She's here. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, Katie. Glad well, to have you. Very happy to be here. I looked back um, at some of my graphics that I was updating this morning. I haven't been here since Oak was still in the pollen count, and that was a few months back. Okay. Oh, wow. Has it been really been that long? Yeah. Welcome okay. back. So very happy to be here. I'm going to get you a look at the pollen count coming up in just a few moments. It's looking good today. No worries. But as you saw with Live Cam, we're starting off the day with plenty of cloud cover, even a little bit of shower activity. And if we switch over to our Lynx One 
graphic here. You can see some of these uh, light showers moving around San Antonio. There's actually, though, off to the south and to the west between Eagle Pass and Crystal City there northwest of Carrizo Springs, some lingering thunderstorm activity. And we're going to continue to see isolated chances of showers and non severe storms today and into Father's Day weekend. I know you want to check out that forecast and I'll have that for you coming up here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. Good to see you. Uh, 1604 at Houseman and no problems to report. What's weird is right out there, it almost looks like the pavement is wet. Uh, there's 10 at Probant and uh, we'll check back in with Katie a little bit later on to see where we may have had a little isolated sprinkle or two, perhaps. And top stories we are following today. We are learning the condition of the woman who was shot while watching a movie at her east side apartment overnight. Please say her injuries are not life threatening. This all happened around 1230 this morning in the 4700 block of Rigsby, not far from Loop 410. Police say the woman and a man were inside the apartment. They heard gunshots, realized bullets were coming through the window and the walls. Investigators found shell casings in the street at the corner of Diane Road and Delcrest. The woman was taken to Bamsey, where she's now recovering. Police are still looking for possible suspects. City Council will be meeting this morning to discuss how the pandemic has affected the city budget. City Council members will specifically be checking out what next year might look like. The pandemic has caused the city to lose some money from things like tourism and sales tax, and the city expects it will still be feeling the effects next year. Highly likely. City Council members will also be briefed on the latest coronavirus numbers. Bear County has now surpassed 5,000 cases with 269 new ones confirmed yesterday. We will be live streaming the council session on KSAT.com as soon as it begins. Mayor Ron Nirenberg will also ask city council members to look into VS financial situation. According to a memo obtained by KSET, VIA officials are considering asking voters in November to approve the allocation of the one eighth cent sales tax to go toward transportation funding. The mayor says he's asking VIA to explain the steps it is taking to manage operations within their current budget. The mayor added that he would not support the ballot measure and wants council to look into it. In a statement, the communications director for VIA told us the company is underfunded and the tax is needed to, quote, simply preserve transit services for those who rely on it, end quote. In your morning headlines, as expected, the uh, Labor Department has released the latest jobs report and police here in Texas searching for a group of people who beat up a man outside a gas station. Also, we take a look at a shark encounter that two teens had in Australia. It was all caught on camera and Olympic gymnast Simone, Bi Simone Biles continues to show us how awesome she is. Our Erica Hernandez joining us live now with more on these stories. Good morning. Hi, Erica. Hi, guys. Well, the latest on the job report front still shows historically high unemployment numbers but it is on the decline. About 1.5 million laid off workers applied for unemployment benefits last week. This latest figure marked the 11th straight weekly decline in applications since they peaked at nearly 7 million in March. The decline last week was much smaller though than in recent weeks falling at just 58,000. The job market appears to have begun a slow recovery. In May, employers added 2.5 million jobs, an increase that suggested that the job market has bottomed out. In other news, authorities here in Texas are looking for a group of suspects after they were caught on surveillance video beating a man outside a convenience store in Klein. This video could be hard to watch for some. This incident happened just this past Sunday. A 24-year-old man was hit and kicked as he left a corner store. The encounter started inside the store. You could see him on surveillance video at the counter checking out. The other customers were crowding him. Words were exchanged. He said the group mocked his hair and clothes. He paid and left. They approached him outside and that is where the attack took place. The Harris County Sheriff's Office is asking the public to call Crime Stoppers with tips about who they are so they can be held accountable. In New York, police there have arrested a man for assaulting a 92-year-old woman on a city sidewalk. This incident also caught on camera. For no apparent reason, the suspect pushed the woman and just walked away. She hit her head on a fire hydrant as she was falling down. The woman who does not want to be identified is still trying to recover from her injuries. With my visor right on my face mask, face mask, so he barely saw who I was. He just saw an elderly lady walking slowly, and he decided I'm perfect for a victim. I'm not going to walk out on the street alone right now. No, absolutely not. 
An anonymous tip led to the arrest of 31-year-old Rashid Brimage, a registered sex offender who police say has been arrested about 65 times. He is due in court in July for arrest earlier this year. The victim is hoping the attacker stays behind bars so she can feel safe again walking on her own. It's a shark encounter that is just way too close for comfort. A teenager filmed a shark coming way too close to her and her brother while they were spearfishing in Australia. The footage shows the shark apparently following them. The two had their spear ready in case the shark decided to attack. This was the third shark encounter in that area the teens were in within 12 hours. It's believed large schools of bait fish off the shores have lured sharks closer to shore. Now, even though the 2020 Summer Olympics aren't happening for another year, check this out. Gymnast Simone Biles isn't on vacation. In fact, she is working on a trick that has never been done before. That right there, what she just did was on her Twitter page. This video shows her attempt at a triple twisting double back. While Biles continues to train for the Tokyo Games, this move won't be in her routine, though. The gymnastics international governing body says it is too dangerous. That's amazing. I can't even do a cartwheel. Oh, wow. But like, my yeah, of it's, course she can pull it off. though. Uh, yeah, but it's it's crazy that she's still trying to do it, even though she can't do it in a routine because it's just so demanding and dangerous to do. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Erica, yeah. Impressive, though. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. Hey, real quick. We have some breaking news. Another major ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court just now coming down. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, is apparently going to remain in place thanks to a ruling this morning by the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, we've yet to hear from the White House. More coming up in our later newscast. Right now it's 909, 77 degrees. And more Texans in their 20s are catching the coronavirus. We're going to explore why in today's Tribune Thursday report. This morning, KSAT launched a new digital show called KSAT Explains. Myra Arthur and RJ Marquez are here to tell us more about it coming up later in the newscast. A duet that will give you chills. Why a video of a man joining a Portland State University student in the singing the national anthem is now going viral. And let's check stocks right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down about 40 points at 26,081. Welcome back. It's 913. A senior at Portland State University was asked to perform the national anthem for the school's virtual commencement ceremony. Madison Hallberg was warming up when an opera singer walked by and decided to join in. The result, a beautiful duet that will probably give you goosebumps. Check it out. And the rockets the bombs bursting. The video was posted on Facebook and has since gone viral. Madison said it's an experience she will never forget. It's symbolic for what we need to do as a people and as community is to not try to outsing the person next to you, but blend with them and harmonize with them. It's a beautiful moment that we shared and in that moment I realized that it's essential for us to raise our voices in empowerment and in love with one another. Ah, I love it so much. I wish we could in the newscast today with it. It's some yeah. powerful stuff. Powerful and beautiful. And our producer said it best earlier, gives, gives you chills. It does. Yeah, I, I'm one of those guys, and maybe because I'm an Air Force brat, but the, the National Anthem has always given me goosebumps. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a Little League game or, or you're just hearing it on TV. It doesn't matter. Really moves you. Yep. Let's go over to Katie Blake now, talk a little bit more. Did my eyes deceive me? You can tell me I'm crazy, Katie Blake. Did I see <laughs> wet pavement here in San Antonio somewhere on TransKai? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had some quick little streamer showers pop up about two hours ago, and okay. now for the most part they're gone, but that did allow for a little bit of rain to fall really across portions of Bear County. So a little bit of rain out there. We may see another stray shower as we get into the afternoon hours, uh, but the pollen count is looking pretty good today. Yesterday, if you'll remember, mold was high because of the rain that we had around on Tuesday. So some big improvement as far as mold is concerned today. 
mold pigweed and grass all low on this Thursday. It is warm out there. Most of us sitting in the mid to upper 70s, 80s down farther to the south, and it's also very muggy because our dew points really are not too far removed from our air temperatures. For the most part, our dew points also in the 70s, so those numbers very close together it means it feels really muggy and sticky out there. And we are starting off with a decent amount of cloud cover this morning. Now, about an hour and a half, two hours ago, when those showers developed over parts of San Antonio and Bear County, you couldn't even see the downtown skyline from this vantage point. So in terms of that, we're starting to see those showers move out a little bit and also this cloud cover gradually starting to erode. But all things considered right now, still pretty gray out there to start the day. A nice breeze though out of the south at 15 miles per hour. And as you saw, humidity is still high. Here's our current satellite and radar view. So it does appear that the showers that developed over the past couple of hours now have moved out. Looks like we've got a little teeny shower there just north of 1604 on the far, far uh, northeast side. But here's the loop of radar over the past hour or so. And Saw some good streamer showers that had developed this morning, but now that rain coming to an end. We do have a cluster of thunderstorms going well to the west, though, between Eagle Pass and La Prior down to Carrizo Springs. So this this is pretty rural portion of uh, Dimmit, Zavala and Maverick counties, but some nice lightning showing up here, some heavy rain there as well. So we'll keep an eye on that cluster of thunderstorms, but all things considered as we head into the early afternoon hours, I expect that thunderstorm activity to really come to an end. And then our focus for rain for the rest of the day will be the shower activity that's starting to pop up down near Beeville and Corpus Christi. The shower activity expected to move north as we head into the middle part of the afternoon and That'll bring in a straight chance of another shower for us here in the Alamo City. But if you're east of 35, you have a better chance to see an isolated shower or non severe storm this afternoon. Uh, just like the past couple of days, we lose the heat of the day, get past sunset. Any shower activity that develops should wind down. But just like what we saw this morning, tomorrow morning starting off cloudy and maybe even a few little of those light showers redeveloping to start the day on Friday. And then a slightly better chance, I think, to see some isolated showers in and around the city as we get into your Friday afternoon and really as you see the planning forecast here in just a second, you're not going to see a whole lot of change in the forecast day to day um, and that's because things generally are staying pretty quiet. We've got upper level high pressure or the heat high centered off to our southwest and actually as we get into Father's Day weekend, it looks like the center of this heat high is going to actually move a bit farther to the west and what that does is just makes a little bit more room for some isolated showers and non severe storms to develop essentially each day, especially during the heat of the day during the heat of the afternoon. So we're going to keep this trend going into your Father's Day weekend. Morning clouds, afternoon sun, about a 20% chance of an isolated shower or non severe storm each afternoon. High temperatures, low to mid 90s. So these rain chances really do lend themselves to outdoor activities being just fine as we get into Father's Day weekend. Have to just keep an eye out in the afternoons for a little passing shower or non severe storm. Here's a look at your day today into the low to mid 80s as we get closer to lunchtime. 92 93 your high temperature this afternoon. Just a 10% chance of a stray shower or storm and then really like I said, not a whole lot of change here as we get into Father's Day weekend and early next week. We do have a plume of dust set to arrive next week. No one is really looking forward to that, but we're going to talk more in detail about that coming up next half hour. Guys, thank Thanks, you, Katie. Katie. 919, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Could Texas turn blue in November? Well, recent polling might give the Biden campaign some reasons to be optimistic. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune explains. Could a longtime red state be a step closer to turning blue? Recent polling shows Joe Biden has a shot at winning Texas in November. And we're already seeing a response to calls for criminal justice reform in the Lone Star State. But first, we begin with the coronavirus. Joining us is Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Let's talk about this coronavirus surge. Wednesday, Texas had another record, recording more than 3,100 new cases. And for the sixth day in a row, reported a record high number of hospitalizations with nearly 3,800 people admitted for treatment. The surge in cases is linked to more Texans in their 20s getting sick. Why? Well, uh, the governor speculates that this age group is maybe not taking social distancing as seriously, uh, you know, as other age groups. Uh, he also noted uh, during a news conference this week that he saw photos like many of us did uh, from people partying on Memorial Day weekend uh, at bars, not practicing social distancing, which the bars 
are on the hook there for uh, creating space to allow people to social distance. So uh, at that news conference, he talked about how, you know, bars are at risk of losing their liquor license from the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission if they're found to not be following uh, these guidelines. Thank you, Alana. And polls suggest that Joe Biden has a shot at winning Texas. And the Tribune writes that how the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee fares here could reshape the state's politics. But will it be worth it for Biden to spend big money to compete here? The short answer is it's not clear. We know it is big money to run in Texas, given the just the, the geography, the, the vast number of media markets to pay for ads to run in. And he's honestly uh, polling better in other states that Trump won in 2016, uh, Michigan, Florida, North Carolina, to name a few. And so the campaign might see money uh, better spent in those areas. But state Democrats are definitely hoping uh, that he invest at some level here in Texas, because uh, doing so could have down ballot uh, successes as far as flipping control of the uh, state house to Democrats and, and solidifying uh, Democratic control of the U.S. House. Let's move on to police reforms. Plans for criminal justice reform beginning to emerge across the country. And here in the Lone Star State, the Texas Legislative Black Caucus held its first in a series of virtual town halls this week to hear from constituents on police brutality and racial inequality. Have police departments and mayors across the state of Texas been quick to take action, Alana? You have seen that, right? Uh, you know, it's not often that we see, you know, government acting quickly, you know, doesn't always go. Uh, it normally takes a lot more, but we've seen uh, these press releases and these uh, announcements from cities and police departments. But if you look at it, a lot of the so-called reforms they're announcing have already been on the books. Uh, our Julie McCullough and Stacey Fernandez look at that today on texastribune.org. And in Houston, for instance, where they announced a whole slew of reforms, they found a lot of those uh, changes were and have been on the books. And asked about it, a spokesperson for the mayor's office said, yeah, that's right. Uh, it just means we're going to uh, make sure they're doing that. Uh, so a lot of people are looking at the these so-called reforms with a, a close eye and wondering how they're happening so fast or, or if they're actually being followed here in Austin. The day after they announced a ban on chokeholds, there was video of an Austin police officer holding a teenager down uh, with his knee uh, at the teenager's neck. So again, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, skepticism on what these reforms actually mean. Alana, one last question. The U.S. Supreme Court may rule today on President Donald Trump's decision to end DACA. Give us a preview. Well, uh, we don't know. It'll come this month before they go on recess. We are watching and our uh, Border Bureau uh, chief, Julian Aguilar, is there in El Paso, uh, ready to, to jump on the news as we uh, watch the latest uh, round of rulings come down from Washington. All right, that is new on the trip. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune, thank you so much. I think you're off next week, so have a good vacation. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, Alana, thanks. And we have more information on the breaking news we brought you earlier concerning DACA. The Supreme Court on Thursday rejected President Donald Trump's efforts to end legal protections for 650,000 young immigrants, a stunning rebuke to the president's in the midst of his re-election re campaign. This news coming down just within the last hour, a second major ruling this week from the Supremes. The justices in a 5-4 ruling have rejected the Trump administration's arguments that the eight-year-old DACA program is illegal and that the courts have no role to play in reviewing the decision to end that program. More coming up on the news at noon and online at ksat.com. Right now, 927, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, it's a new on-demand program analyzing and explaining important things happening in our community. We sit down with our Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus to discuss KSAT Explains. Amid the pandemic, two business owners in Detroit have come up with something they call the toad opener, how it helps people open doors with their foot. Tomorrow is Juneteenth, a holiday celebrating, celebrating the days that people were finally freed. Even though celebrations here in San Antonio were canceled due to the pandemic, there's still one way you can get involved. Our Devin Clark will explain after the break. Welcome back. It is 930. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation freed slaves and Confederate states back on January 1st in 1863, it took another two years, six months and 18 days before that freedom was realized for slaves in Texas and other areas of the South. That day of freedom, June 19th, 1865, also known as Juneteenth, has been celebrated ever since, especially here in San Antonio. KSAT's Devin Clark gives us a closer look at the upcoming holiday as part of our new series, History Untold.
what I like to say is uniquely Texas, but it's celebrated all over the world. Juneteenth San Antonio Commissioner Byron Miller has been in charge of celebrations here in the Alamo City for the past 25 years. We've had uh, parades, festivals, pageants, church events, gospel concerts, R&B concerts. In earlier years, Miller says celebrations included cooking contests and family reunions for slaves who had been separated, traditions that began on June 19th, 1866, a year after Major General Gordon Granger of the Union Army settled into Galveston Bay and read General Order No. 3. That basically said that either you work, stay on the plantation and work for wages or go about and become an entrepreneur on your own. More than two and a half years before the order was read, President Abraham Lincoln granted freedom to all slaves in Confederate states through the Emancipation Proclamation. Some say it took so long for the word to travel because the man tasked with delivering the news was killed. Others say the farmers simply chose not to obey orders. On June 19, 1865, freedom became undeniable. There were people of African descent slaves that had assembled there in Galveston and heard the news and it then quickly spread across the state. That included nearby San Antonio, which in recent years with Miller's help has hosted the largest Juneteenth celebration in the state. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Juneteenth has been recognized as an official state holiday since 1980. This year, due to COVID-19, the events are canceled, but Miller says it's a good way to celebrate uh, by pushing policymakers to create legislation that focuses on the continued push for equality here in Texas. On-demand, in-depth perspective. It's the goal of a new digital show, KSET, that we launched here yesterday, today. Today, yep. KSET explains debut with an episode focused on the unrest we've been seeing across the country, a look at how the protests and demonstrations have played out in our city, and a closer examination of what it means to be black in San Antonio. Our Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus have been working on this project, and they join us now live from the newsroom to talk about it. Now, first off, let's talk about Case That Explains and why we've recreated this brand new show. Yeah, good morning, guys. Thanks for having us on today. Case That Explains is really an evolution of the mm -hmm. KSAT News at 9, the 9 p.m. version uh, that we used to do every single day. We noticed that when we took the opportunity to focus those shows on a specific topic, dive a little bit more in depth, do the entire show circled around all one one topic, but all the different angles, different aspects of it. People really gravitated towards that. We focused on things like property taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, you were really involved in the, the project that we did about the evolution of Tejano, Tejano music. music yeah. And people just, I think, have an appetite for more in-depth mm -hmm. storytelling. And that's what we hope to do here. Yeah, this has always kind of been the goal of the KSAT News at 9. So for people wondering where that show went, we have now kind of evolved this into KSAT Explains. And that was kind of always our thing. We wanted to sort of show different topics, things that were affecting you, the viewers, um, and show it from different angles as well. So I feel that we've been able to do that, especially with this first episode that we have, uh, which has to do with the unrest across America and really some of the historic times that we're in right now. Absolutely. Yeah, let's talk about that first episode, guys. Uh, of KSAT explains it does focus on the unrest. Why did you guys decide to take a deep dive on that topic? I think it's something that everyone is being affected by right now. I mean, in every different corner of the country, uh, people have emotions that they're experiencing, thoughts that they're, they're you know, contemplating every single day about how life is going to change, how they can change um, what they do in their own homes, with their own families. And I think it's important for us to talk about what this means in San Antonio because communities across the country are all different and unique. So we want to focus on what this call for change really looks like in our community. Yeah, absolutely. And that was sort of the big focus of this uh, first episode was being able to speak to people on the ground and also people that have fought this civil rights battle in San Antonio for decades. We spoke to the president of the NAACP chapter here and then we also talked to activists here in San Antonio that have been part of Black Lives Matter. So it's really kind of an in-depth look at everything that's going on and the way it's affecting our community. And it kind of just opened up, opens up a, a dialogue that I think uh, there are some things that I learned in doing several of these interviews that I did not know before, so uh, it was really kind of an eye-opening experience. Yeah, we hope that this show is part of that conversation and, and helps continue the conversations right. that people are already having.
And Myra, you mentioned that it is meant to tell stories in a unique way, and we understand some of what people will see in this episode is very personal. And I think that that's important because I think what people are experiencing across the country is very personal. And so we actually, um, we are fortunate enough to have a diverse newsroom and we talk to a lot of members of our own team who are black in San Antonio about what their experiences have been like. And, um, you know, I think that it's important to hear from someone who is part of a community that really ha has felt racial injustice over the years. And I think that it's also important to note that we hear from, from some of our own coworkers who say that, you know, this is a time for change, but not everyone's sure exactly where to start. Right, one of the uh, stories that sticks out to me is the story of Charles Davis. He works for the UTSA Creative Services Department. I went to school with Charles. I'm actually one of his fraternity brothers, and he uh, told us a story about his own encounter with a police officer that uh, turned out violent for him. I had no idea about this, so it was wow. really kind of a, uh, again, an eye-opening experience for me to be able to hear that, and especially hear from so many different people uh, in the black community here in San Antonio and see the way that this movement has affected them personally. Yeah, not people just here uh, in our own literal right. team at KSAT, yeah. but but across the city. Yeah, guys, we should probably explain how people can watch KSAT Explains, right? <laughs> yes, that is absolutely critical. Uh, the episode is up right now, actually, on KSAT.com. You can watch it anytime, and you can also find it on the KSAT TV app. This is a streaming show, so you're not going to find it right here on the air on KSAT 12. You're going to find it digitally. So any way that you stream, if you use Roku or Apple TV, you can find it through the KSAT TV app there. Right. So every Thursday, we're going to drop a new episode. That's what we've been saying. We're dropping these episodes. So think <laughs> of it kind of like a uh, Netflix, when Netflix sort of just like releases these things, um, these series out, you know, on certain days. So that's kind of the goal of this show. So make sure to check it out. This one is really, uh, really in depth and uh, on demand as well. Yeah, we hope to. We hope that you guys enjoy it. We hope that, again, it, it really keeps this conversation going. And one of the great things about this show, you can watch it anytime you want. Absolutely. It is anytime. on demand, so it is there for your viewing. We are going to check it out, guys. Yes, Myra, RJ, thank you so much, and we look forward to the show. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And uh, Katie Blake is back now as we go outside with live cam. See how things are looking out there at 939 on a Thursday morning. Yeah, seeing a little bit more sunshine now. Still plenty of clouds for the time being. And the shower activity that popped up around Bear County, that has moved out. We could certainly see another stray shower or non-severe storm later this afternoon. But I want to give you a closer look at radar really quickly. Uh, so there are those showers now that have moved out of San Antonio. We're just left with some cloud cover. But there's a complex of thunderstorms that has developed down well to the southwest, moving uh, really Really affecting rural portions of Maverick, Dimmit, and Zavala counties there. This little cluster of thunderstorms, which has some punch to it, a lot of lightning, some heavy rain as well, is moving south, and the worst of this should stay between Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs. We'll get another look at that cluster of storms coming up in just a few minutes. Temperature-wise, very warm out there already, 82 in Pleasanton, 79 in New Braunfels, and we'll see our high temperatures today climb back into the 90s. Forecast high temperature for San Antonio right around 93. Spots off to the west could certainly uh, be approaching the century mark by later this afternoon. I'll have another look at your full forecast, including when our first batch of Saharan dust is expected to arrive here in South Texas. That's coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thanks, Katie. Transcad, real quick, taking a look. P pavement is drying out there at 1604 and Hausman. That was one of those areas got a little soaking earlier this morning. All right, time now is 940 and 77 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. A couple of business owners in Detroit have come up with a unique idea for opening doors without touching them. How this opener works and how much it's going to cost, that's coming up next. 944, check this out. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Well, in a new COVID-19 world, two business owners in Detroit have created something called the Toad Opener. It's a touchless door opener so people can open a restaurant or bathroom door with their foot. Nick Moritz and Cliff Wells created the 3D printed design that can be easily installed with a special adhesive. They cost less than $50 and can be purchased online at toadopener.com. Another one of those things where you're like, why didn't we think of this 
yeah. sooner, like way sooner, like years and years ago. Very useful. Because I'm one of those people that even before the pandemic, I was really? paranoid about touching well, bathroom handles on the way out. A lot of germs. I feel justified in my paranoia now. Yeah, well, <laughs> very much so. A little bit. <laughs> Katie's back now talking about, uh, you, you gave us a little hint. We are on the lookout for some Saharan dust that's going to be headed this way eventually. It's going to kind of make us look like uh, downtown Los Angeles on a summer day eventually, right? Right, yeah, really mm -hmm. hazy. Um, so there's the look that it's going to get of our South Texas skies, mm -hmm. but it's also the feeling that you're going to get behind your eyes there, a little itchy, oh, no. kind of watery. Yeah, so the Saharan dust sometimes almost acts like an allergen, and it is certainly an irritant. So overall, look at what's going on in the Atlantic Basin. No tropical development, no tropical cyclones expected to develop in the next two to five days. So very quiet out there, and a big reason for that is because of this Saharan dust that will be coming over from the continent of Africa, and a big plume of it here is already moving into the Atlantic Ocean. So when we get this Saharan air, we call this the Saharan air layer, when this is very active, that typically hinders tropical development because this air is very dry and for tropical cyclones to form, we need a lot of moisture out there. So the trade winds bring this big plume of Saharan dust over to the Caribbean by the weekend and then eventually into the Gulf of Mexico and here in South Texas by early next week. We expect this to really start to fill into South Texas beginning on Tuesday of next week and it could linger through next weekend. This is a big plume of this dust moving in and it won't just be affecting us here in Texas, also several other states along the Gulf Coast. So we'll get through the weekend without that dust, but early next week again on Tuesday, we'll be expecting that to start to filter in. Uh, otherwise, allergen wise today, things are looking good. Mold, pigweed and grass are all low on this Thursday, so we'll take it for the time being. Here's a look at the rest of your day. 85 by lunchtime, 93 your high temperature this afternoon with a chance of a stray shower or non severe storm through the late afternoon hours. Once we get past sunset, those rain chances drop out of the forecast and we'll see temperatures fall back into the low 70s overnight tonight and really over the next several days, there won't be a whole lot of change in the forecast. In fact, I think after today, we'll see our rain chances go up ever so slightly 20% chance really each day for an isolated shower or non severe storm and that will be the case through Father's Day on Sunday and even into early next week and uh, really we just got no big movers or shakers moving into South Texas weather wise. So that really limits us to just these pop up showers and thunderstorms each day. We did have a couple of those showers develop very early this morning. Those are gone now, but I do want to check on this large cluster of thunderstorms that developed essentially from an outflow boundary a couple hours ago. This now sitting between Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs, and I mentioned this a couple moments ago. It looks like the worst of this storm will kind of split Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs because it's moving down to the south. There's a ton of lightning here, and this actually has a bit of a twist to it overall. Now, I'm not really talking about rotation, but the overall movement of the storm is almost twisting counterclockwise, so we could have a very, very small upper-level low or what we call an MCV, mesoscale convective vortex, happening here. Either way, that will continue to drop south. Again, the worst of that storm will stay to your west, Crystal City and Carrizo Springs. So uh, that's spitting out a lot of cloud cover there. Otherwise, as we head into the rest of the day, our focus for rainfall will stay east of the I-35 corridor. We'll be looking for some isolated showers and non-severe storms to really hang out east of 35 through this afternoon into the early evening hours overnight. Skies fill back in with clouds. We can start off with a few more sprinkles early tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon. I think a slightly higher coverage of some of those isolated showers and storms. So. Not a whole lot of change here over the next couple of days, and that is on purpose. Uh, we're just not going to have a whole lot of big changes here over the next week or so, with the exception of that Saharan dust arriving on Tuesday. We'll be right back. The Atlanta police officers accused of shooting and killing Rayshard Brooks are now facing several charges. Plus, new details in the investigation of the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. Here's today's 9 at 9. This Atlanta officer seen shooting Rayshard Brooks, a black man in this Wendy's parking lot Friday, now facing murder charges. Officer Devin Brosnan facing three charges, among them aggravated assault. Officer Roth actually kicked Mr. Brooks while he laid on the ground, while he was there fighting for his life. 
Quaker Oats getting rid of the Aunt Jemima pancake brand and logo. The cancellation of that brand, which is more than 130 years old, comes as an acknowledgement that its origins are based on a derogatory racial stereotype. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino is requesting the council consider removing the statue of Christopher Columbus from Columbus Park downtown. He's requesting the name of the park be changed to Piazza Italia. New reports show nine states have hit record numbers in new coronavirus cases. It's fading away. It's going to fade away, but having a vaccine would be really nice, and that's going to happen. Hospitals in our area say they are better prepared for a spike in COVID-19 cases than they were back in March. We have capacity, we have PPE. We feel good about keeping patients safe that need to come to the ER. The new report on the crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and seven others, including their pilot, who in their final moments told air traffic control they were climbing to 4,000 feet. But in reality, they were falling, according to the NTSB, evidence that the veteran pilot may have been disoriented in the fog. The reward growing in the case of a missing soldier here in Texas, Private First Class Vanessa Guillen, was last seen back on April 22nd in a parking lot at Fort Hood. The reward for information as to her whereabouts is more than doubled to $55,000. The National Retail Federation expects consumers to spend $17 billion on Father's Day this year. The report says that 77% of shoppers surveyed say Father's Day is especially important this year because of the pandemic. Dating apps have gone to the dogs. A new app called Dig helps people find a partner who loves their dog as much as they do. Users create a profile for them and their dog, then decide if they dig a potential match. The app even suggests dog-friendly locations for the first date. Tomorrow on GMS 8 and 9, it's an art form loved by those in the LGBTQ community and beyond. But most recently, several South Texas drag queens have had to pivot from live performances to virtual ones. As part of our South Texas Pride series, Ivan Edetta speaks to three drag queens to find out how the change is going. And over the past few weeks, we have been highlighting amazing high school seniors in our community. This is a yearly tradition here at KSET, but this year we also want to recognize college graduates that are going on to do great things. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, our Max Massey introduced us to a UTSA senior who is using his career to help our community. Hey, this year, the uh, 75th anniversary of the Woodlawn Theater in San Antonio, so they're now hosting a weekly movie night. That's right, and it's starting tomorrow. People can watch a movie musical for $10 on the theater's big screen. Doors at 6. Uh, ticket sales go to the theater and the theater academy. Make sure, to, make sure you stay safe. The theater will not exceed 50% capacity, and no tickets will be sold in person. They must be purchased online. Uh, additionally, those over the age of two must wear a mask. And just so you know, this is the Woodlawn Theater on 1920 Fredericksburg Road. And it starts with Chicago tomorrow night, Dream Girls June 26th, Hairspray July 3rd, Evita July 10th, and July 17th, Little Shop of Horrors. Again, starting tomorrow on Friday. And for more on that, with the link and everything, including the email address and the phone number, you can find this story on our webpage at ksats.com. It's good news for the people who work at the theater. They've been itching to come back. So That's right. We Welcome back to the Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, for all of us here at KSAT, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.